Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious. I mean, we, we were kind of talking about this before this started. You know, the whole concept of using pathological complete response rate, mm -hmm. you know, to predict, you know, to, at least in theory, to predict adjuvant benefit, you know, has come from these trials in HER2. I mean, that's really where they got it. That's how they proved pertuzumab. But now we have the ALTO trial. You know, we had the NEO-ALTO, which had a pathological complete response rate that was high. And now we have ALTO that really didn't, I mean, it showed a marginal survival benefit or, or disease-free survival benefit. But is that really a way to no, kind of approach No, there was no disease. <laughs> there was no benefit. But I think the drugs, you know, the drugs are different. And we have to be careful about cross-trial comparisons. The toxicity imparted by lapatinib is profound compared to these other drugs. And if you look carefully at these studies, the dose reductions, the relative dose intensity for the lapatinib and the trastuzumab, they were having to dose reduce and hold doses of standard HER2 targeted therapy. No, and so I think that is impacting our ultimate outcomes. And also, the, oh, sorry. Go no, no, but there's another issue, and we were talking about that before as we were driving in here today. And the issue is that maybe we expected too much out of the ALTO because when you look at the neo ALTO, it compared trastuzumab to lapatinib or the combination in combination with taxane. <laughs> and then they backloaded the anthracycline afterwards. We've done a similar study, the B41, where we saw incremental benefit in terms of PCR, but not to the level of that, because we already have given AC followed by taxolapatinib or trastuzumab combination. So to expect that, that the neo alto double pathologic response with lapatinib and to expect to see that in the adjuvant setting as a survival is actually it's not a logical, you know, assumption, right? Because you get more treatment after, and we saw very incremental benefit. I think B41 is really helpful in this setting because well, is, all right. the therapy was given. The same with the German right. trial. And then we have 40601, our uh, cooperative group trial, that again showed very little difference in terms of PATH-CR in the group as a whole with the addition of lapatinib. We've seen lots of toxicity. The Neosphere uh, uh, trial-like Neo Alto gave the anthracycline out back after surgery. But one of the big issues we have also is the patients we enroll on these trials in the adjuvant setting. So people are really excited about the drugs. They enroll everybody on it. We're giving everybody who has HER2 positive disease HER2 targeted therapy. So the idea that we're going to improve outcome in patients who more than 50% had ER positive disease, uh, who have you know little cancers with very few positive, if any, nodes, you know, you might need 15,000 women to see a difference there. Absolutely. And uh, no one's funding, we were talking about this in the car right on the way in here, no one is funding those 15,000 patient trials anymore. I mean, yeah. what, what does someone in the community do? Yeah, which, heard of uh, all of this back and forth. It, it, that's, that's exactly right. Someone in the community really has to follow label. I mean, that, that's really what we have to do. Oh, and, and of course, enroll patients in clinical trials, but we, you know, we, we know like a very small percentage of the patients do go. Um, I think, uh, a, a, since uh, you know, TCH neoadjuvantly was uh, was a very uh, effective and tolerated regimen, TCHP followed by uh, transfusivab, uh, it really you, you have to go on label as as a community oncologist and and hope that uh, someone like the the, the academic uh, people will uh, have a big enough trial one day and that long enough to see a real a real benefit uh, in giving adjuvant uh, pertuzumab. You don't give anthracyclines much in HER2 positive disease? I'm not asking Sarah. <laughs> well, don't. You can don't. Believe me, it's moved eastward. Okay? We don't give it. No, we don't give anthracyclines at all anymore in HER2 positive disease. Do you? Yeah, no. no. We don't. TCHP. We do the same de facto regimen now. Yeah, we give anthracyclines. I give anthracyclines to young people with bad cancers. So you spec at the after. Use the TCC. AC. But, but, but the point of going back the to the, the elder drugs, I think we have to be careful, and you hear a lot of commentary about you know the whole relationship between PCR and survival and all that. But the fact is that if you actually take a bird's eye view and look at all the progress that we made in the treatment of breast cancer and how PCR has improved uh, with regimens that also improve survival, going from the CMF days with single digit PCR to AC by 15% to anthracyclic taxanes, almost 30% to her to positive patients 45, 50%, and with dual therapy 60 to 70%. And all these modalities have improved survival. Now, not in individual trials correlating PCR with survival, but so there's a very strong correlation as we see PCR increasing yes. to get survival benefits. But if the incremental increase in PCR is small, we're not going to see 
So you need like a thousands of patients to see. And, and you're not going to die, isn't it? I mean, PCR graduates you to the next level, correct? And then you do the, the iSpy trial, which is a really novel idea of looking at a menu of different novel chemotherapy agents or targeted therapy agents in combination with a standard taxane anthracycline background is, uh, is, is, I think, a really neat idea because you can look at differences in PCR based on signatures, so based on the different uh, subgroups of breast cancer, both first by just immunohistochemistry and then by expression analyses as a secondary endpoint. And then you can divide, des design your phase three neoadjuvant trial that's powered appropriately in the right subgroup. And that's where we run into problems. The same is true in HER2. I mean, you know, we treat everybody with HER2 positive disease as if they have one cancer, and we're absolutely clear that they don't. 